I feel like artists are like gardeners that are planting trees. And as you know, trees take a long time to grow. And maybe one day it brings back the forest and the forest brings back animals, life. And maybe the river that was gone is back. And it can bring back life, maybe. Well, I'm writing now the violin part that Caroline will play with me. We knew that it was snowing today. So I had the image of the lonely walker in the snow and this pure white spirit seeking for truth, maybe, I don't know. Again, yeah, seeking for answers, listening to, to himself because the nature is silent. This is the best moment for listening to yourself when everything is silent around you. So this piece is um, yeah, related to this movement of the inner uh, emotions that could come up, like the thoughts could come up with movement and then you let it go and then it comes back to the piece. So it's the inner voice that are inside of us that I try to express in this, in this piece. Julian's phenomenal to work with. He's a genius. And I've been working with him on, like, I guess the types of sounds that we're looking for and the textures and the, the kind of atmosphere that we want to create. But he's wonderful at actually writing down the note, the, like the, the notation so I can actually play it, like the harmonics. The idea of the harmonics on the violin is that it makes the violin whistling. Like if a voice or a sound would come uh, from the nature, like the wind would bring the, the sounds. So the person would follow these sounds, like these magic sounds, and maybe happen something from some light coming out of this uh, whistling, some person, some we don't know who we will meet. And uh, so yes, uh, we had the idea of the harmonics for for that, the personification of the the mystery. <laughs> You have snowflakes falling, and he said exactly that's what he was thinking when he wrote it. When I improvise, I'm trying to let go everything so I'm. I'm conscious in a way of what I'm doing, but in another sense, I'm completely letting go, letting go.
towards trying to figure out what I did is a very hard process. And in order not to um, bring the intellect to decide and uh, let the inner voice decide. So it's, it's a very delicate process. If we have um, an open heart, then we can figure out what's, what are the best options. And Caroline is pretty much like, like that. She has an open heart. And so she's trying things and then, oh yes, that's what I'm looking for. And then, oh yes, but maybe we could add that. And so this emulation, it's what um, brings the, um, this process to be like magical. It's precious moments. It's not every day like that. When I feel those moments of wisdom or those moments of, aha, when, where does that come from, you're asking? Um, that's a mystery. So, but it's beautiful because I think it comes from, you, you find it through the moment itself. And that's the spontaneity of art and creativity, is you find it through this exact moment. You don't find it by searching for it. You find it by being in this moment. And so that's kind of the beauty of it is that everything is always changing. You know, like every snowflake is different. Every leaf is different. Every, everything in nature. Beethoven, he called himself like the, the keeper of the nature. So I, I don't feel myself I'm, I'm the keeper of the nature, but I, I feel deeply connected. It's a, a way to resist, but not in fighting, but in bringing uh, an alternative way in the creation, in the, in the facts we are bringing creation. I believe that if people has the choice between destruction and creation, they will always follow the creation. Because it's fair, because they feel inside of them that it brings peace inside of them. But our society, unfortunately, brings us to think that the change the creativity is out of the boundaries. So it's always scary to go out of the boundaries. And, and we like to think that if we stay inside our boundaries, then we are happier. And in fact, our boundaries could be a prison for our imagination, for our heart, for and if we break our own boundaries, then we can start feeling that we're um, linked to each other and then that we can bring something maybe to our neighbor or our neighbor will bring something to us and not fearing that we will lose our freedom because in fact we're not. And I feel pretty much that having the chance to be to be here, to play the music, to be related to to different artists and to know them and to work with them, it brings these boundaries to disappear for myself and I see the result, this feeling that I get. Um, and maybe when people will listen to the music, not mine, but the music of Chopin, the music of Beethoven, the music of the great composer, maybe it is the goal to remove, to help them remove their boundaries and to start feeling by the way of the imagination that they can go out of them and they they can disappear and it brings them this, this, this feeling that everything is possible and that's what I feel with music that is magic it can bring you to, to imagine a better life, a better future and 
that's why I, I keep uh, the face because normal, normally, you know, when you see on TV what's going on in the world and and everything that is going, yeah, bad for for the people, the suffering, and the, it can put you down, it can put the creativity down and the, the will to do something. Uh, to, to to stop any any uh, how can I say to stop you from 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 the creativity. Sometimes I had difficult times that I thought I'm not related first to myself and and secondly to to what I'm doing. So like an imposter, someone that is not at his place in this world. But when you go out of, of this turbulence, of this storm, inner storm, and you, you start seeing the, the light coming out of the tunnel, then, then you can... You, you, there is a scientist that says that when you're in a dysphoric state, then you can't create. And sometimes um, people in general think, oh, he's an artist because he's always depressed, so he's creating. But in fact, it's when you come out of this dysphoric state that you can, you can start writing. And maybe you bring something from what's down here to to the top, to, to the light, you bring it. And maybe people are related to that because they feel, oh yes, that's what I feel, you know, that's what I feel myself. Oh yes, oh, that's, that's really deep. So we have always to dig <laughs> inside of us and it's universal what we're living, what we're experiencing in our lives. Maybe art is a way to translate it into sound, into visual, um, into poetry, into forms like sculptures. And the good news is that we we are born with the the kindness and uh, with the open heart. So it's afterwards what we decide to do with it, with this gift, to keep it, to protect it, to still believe in it, or we decide to forget about it and. Somehow, um, art is bringing back, back this voice of um, the childhood, of the, the first years of our lives, when we were pure and when we, we were uh, connected much more than we do when we grow, because there is education, because there, there, there is society, so we are a part of a system, so we need to behave. We need to, we need to entertain. We need to, we need to do something. And in art, the process is to undo things. The process is to forget that you're doing. And when you let go things, it's doing by by itself. So you don't decide. You don't, you don't, you, you don't want it. You don't have to want it. It's there. And like the seed. In the, in, the, in the soil that is meant to, to go out. But because we are uh, trying too much, it doesn't go. And if we just believe in it and we bring love to it and care, it's like bringing light to it. And so it will come out. Someday we have to believe 
<rire> Jouer quand même. Thank you. 